So we talked about it a little bit already, but tell me what motivated you and I guess your wife to get this petition started. Um, really, it just seemed like there was a lot of information out there and there was just nothing being done with it. There's so much controversial um, perspectives on what actually happened. There's a lot of people that are kind of speaking up and hinting that, you know, there's something more that happened that people, everyone there knows it and no one's saying anything. And they're scared of this uh, guy, Caleb, and they're, for whatever reason, insinuating some involvement of this person. And, you know, it's just like, if the police aren't going to look into it and the police aren't going to charge any of the parties with at least the crimes that they know occur, like the social hosting and the, you know, providing alcohol to minors with firearms in the home and allowing for these events that led up to his death, whether it, whether it happened at his property or at the property or not, all these things were precursors that kind of set the stage for all this stuff to happen. And if these irresponsible parties aren't being held accountable, then who is, you know, if they're not going to, if they're not going to go after him for, or go after a person for, uh, for murder charges, go after a person for the things you can get them on and get the, get some pressure on them so they can talk and say, Hey, we're going to charge you with this felony, but we're not interested in charging you with this felony. We're interested in getting the truth to this matter, whether you're involved or not. And, it seems like the only avenue that hasn't really been pursued that's being ignored by, you know, Oklahoma State Police and whoever else is in charge of the investigation. Apparently, the FBI is involved now as of yesterday. So hopefully, you know, they can get some answers that the other organizations either couldn't or are choosing not to. So that was the, the biggest thing. There's too many conflicting stories. There's a ton of video and photographic evidence that points, you know, fingers at, you know, some people that it seems pretty clear, you know, to a lot of people, but you know, you don't want to make assumptions until you have all the evidence. And I've been trying hard not to put my opinion out there other than let's, let's do what we can do with what we know. And if no one else is doing it, then we're going to kind of, you know, hold people accountable and, and put pressure on them to make them do their job. You know, what else is their job? If it's not that use the tools and resources you have, to get the answers that you can. And if you're not going to do it, then step aside and let someone else do it. And where are you from? I'm from Portland, Oregon. So how did you come across this case? You know, my wife told me about it. She saw a story and then it, it really kind of touched her. And, you know, we have kids and I would, I would never stop until I was dead until I found, you know, who I felt was responsible for it. And, you know, you just see a lot of similarities in, in your life and this family's life and how you start to feel and you can relate. And, uh, you know, you just feel like motivated. You like, you want to do something. What can you do? Well, the only thing I thought of is let's start a petition. Let's get some interest. Let's push the agenda harder. Even though it's been eight months, let's re- reignite the flame that's kind of died down and you know, put pressure where we can put pressure. How did you guys come up with the content of what the petition would say? How did you know what you wanted to push for? Um, We didn't know about the social hosting law, but we heard other people mention it, and they were kind of making a big deal about it. Like, why is is no one following up on this? So we just looked into it. I'm like, wow, okay. They have, like, a really good tool here that they could use that's just being ignored. It's like, why do you pass a law and law enforcement has all of this evidence, video evidence, witness evidence, photographic evidence, um, even admit people admitting that they did things that are involved. It's like, how much more do you need to get a case to put pressure on people than that? It just seems like there's more involved that, that no one's really talking about. I don't know if there's some sort of relationship with law enforcement and the family or, or people involved in the whole, the whole thing, but it sure seems like people either got a heads up or they have, you know, they turn, they're turning their head, choosing not to go down that route. But whatever the case may be, um, you know, there needs to be some more answers. The tools are there. The evidence is there. Just, you know, do your job. 
And we're in day three of the petition even existing, and you're roughly 300 sig- uh, signatures away from your goal. How does that feel? Uh, it feels great. I mean, I had no idea it was going to take off like that. I'm glad it did. Everyone that sees, there's you know, there's a high ratio of people that look at it and actually sign it. Um, you know, some people have contributed money to help uh, promote it, and you know, the more people that can do that, the better. Um, all the money goes towards getting it put in front of other people who otherwise wouldn't see the story. And I know Jefferson County is pretty small and with, you know, almost 1500 signatures, the population, I believe is 5,800. So we're talking, you know, 20% or more of the population, 66% of the signatures are coming from Jefferson County. So that says, you know, it sends a pretty big message when the majority or at least a huge portion of population of that County want this thing to go through the people aren't being represented they're asking for this to be done you know they're not they're not getting represented by their their local police their law enforcement the politicians in the area they're just there needs to be more more done and if nothing else what are you hoping that this support will show noah's family um that they're willing to use every tool available to get the answers that should have already been found out by now. You know, if you, if you can't, if you can't get a murder investigation completed because you don't have the evidence, then just do police work, you know, use the tools that you have at your disposal to get the answers that you need, you know, and clearly there was a crime that was committed that there's evidence of that they're not pursuing. The social host hosting law is pretty clear, you know, and it's just not, it's just not happening. I, I called the district attorney's office. I emailed the DA. I called the sheriff's office. I emailed the sheriff. Neither one of them have responded. I sent them links to the petition. I faxed over a copy of it as well to both offices. There hasn't been a response yet. It's only been one day. So, you know, I understand they probably have to talk to their, their, their press people and the people who handle that and their legal counsel and whoever they talk to, to, you know, make any sort of public statement but you know it's been what eight months now or Mm -hmm. around there Mm -hmm. there needs to be action they need to have a response this needs to get a resolution okay and is there anything else that you would like to say or add that you feel like i didn't ask you um the only thing i can say is that if If you know something about this and you're not coming forward because you're scared of what's going to happen, just imagine what happens if you don't. This is never going to go away. And the people that know what you know are never going to stop haunting you. And if you feel threatened now, just imagine in five years from now when your life is different and you have a family and you have more to lose. You need to handle this now. You need to come forward There are protections out there for witnesses, and I guarantee you there's prosecutors, there's detectives, there's PIs that are following all these threads. So if people are making threats online, which I've seen, it's all documented and it's all going to come back. And you just need to be the first person to come out and do the right thing. You know, Mm -hmm. people have been silent for too long. You need to stand up and do what's right. That's probably it, you know, keep spreading the message, spread the petition. If you're contacted by police or the FBI, tell them everything, you know, and just say, hey, you know, I didn't know this was going to happen if you didn't. And this is what happened. How can you protect me now from whoever I feel threatened from? Because it it seems clear to me that it 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 was a murder. It It was a homicide. It wasn't an undetermined death. It wasn't a hit and run. It wasn't, you know, whatever it was. 